it's been over a year now since we reviewed the original Seagate Momentus XT. And I believe at the end of that review, I, I said it was finally a good hybrid hard drive. The concept of a hybrid hard drive is really simple to understand. You take a normal mechanical hard drive, uh, something that looks like this, and you know this is very slow compared to an SSD, but its price per gigabyte is great. Um, this particular drive is 750 gigs, and to get something similar in capacity on an SSD, you'd have to spend well over $1,000, whereas something like this you can get for under 200 bucks. So you take a mechanical hard drive, and you combine it with a small amount of NAND. Uh, this is the same NAND that you put on an SSD, uh, but you give it a little bit of NAND to cache frequently accessed data. Now, why would you only give it a little bit of NAND? Well, to understand that, you have to understand the economics of being a hard drive manufacturer. These guys primarily sell to OEMs. They sell to retail as well, but they get a lot of their orders through companies like Apple, HP, Dell, Lenovo, Toshiba, all those guys. From their perspective, they're selling very, very affordable machines. And as a result, they can't go for premium components across the board. They spend a lot of money on CPUs. They spend a lot of money, depending on the segment, on GPUs. Uh, when it comes to the hard drives, they want something that has a lot of capacity and is very cheap. Hard drive manufacturers are unfortunately handcuffed by this. Uh, and, and that's also why you, you don't really see a lot of companies. I mean, even if you look at Apple, right? They ship 5,400 RPM drives by default in all their MacBook Pros. And that's just horribly disappointing, but it makes sense because Apple views hard drives as a commodity. And as such, you don't really spend a lot of money on that. It's all about capacity per dollar. That's what they care about. Now, for a company like Seagate to increase their bill of materials, uh, especially to put something as expensive as NAND on here, um, they can't throw a whole lot on here. While I would like to see 20, 30 gigs of NAND on here, uh, the original Momentus XT only had four gigs. Uh, and even that four gigs was a stretch because Seagate actually used four gig SLC, single level cell NAND. That's the stuff that we used to use in SSDs a couple years back. Uh, extremely reliable, extremely fast, also about twice the price of NAND that you find in consumer grade SSDs today. Why would it use SLC NAND when cost is such a big concern? Well, the pain of dealing with MLC NAND and worrying about wearing out your NAND and all of that, especially on a cache, wearing out your NAND uh, when you're doing a lot of writing to it, when the controller is writing to it um, fairly regularly, that is a major concern. Seagate not having a ton of experience in the SSD space, it's totally understandable that they kind of wanted to play the safe route and go with SLC NAND. But as a result, you know, that's all we got in the first one. We got a 500 gig drive, with four gigs of NAND. And to make matters easier for Seagate, worse for the consumer, the original configuration only used the NAND to cache reads. Now, why would you only want it to cache reads? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, from Seagate's perspective, it greatly simplifies the overall architecture of the drive. Once you start caching both reads and writes, well, look, you've got effectively an SSD on here uh, because that's what an SSD, SSD does. It's a controller that manages reads and writes to flash. And in doing that, as you've seen, if you followed our SSD reviews, most companies have a lot of difficulty getting that right. It's very difficult. Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's extremely challenging to produce a reliable solution that performs well, that deals with both reads and writes to NAND. And I've written a lot on why that is and why it's so complex. But I can understand, again, that Seagate wouldn't want to do that for their first kind of mass market, market uh, hybrid hard drive. So again, the first Momentus XT we got was priced around 150 bucks for 500 gigs with uh, four gigs of SLC NAND, and that was used as a read-only cache. Now pairing that with a mechanical hard drive actually makes a lot of sense. The controller on the hard drive already knows everything that's being accessed, and all you really need next to it is a NAND controller that looks at frequently accessed uh, LBAs, frequently accessed data, and pulls the most frequently accessed stuff into the NAND itself. For client workloads, those workloads happen to be mostly reads. Uh, it, it varies depending on the user, but it's definitely not a 50-50 split between reads and writes. So generally speaking, you could actually get good performance out of uh, this four gigs of, of read cache that you had on the original Momentus XT. In our review of the drive, that's exactly what I found. I found that it was faster than any other two and a half inch hard drive. And in many cases, it was actually faster than three and a half inch hard drives that were, uh, uh, on paper at least, much higher performing. Again, you can't beat random access to uh, solid state memory, to, to NAND, 
And, and that's really what Seagate leveraged with the original Momentus XT. There were, of course, problems, teething problems, uh, firmware issues, the kinds of things that you would expect from any new product, particularly any new solid state product. It seemed like a lot of them had to do with power management on the original drive, and, and Seagate hoped to uh, address compatibility and, and a lot of those reliability issues through subsequent firmware updates. Today, they're back with a new version of the drive. Uh, it's actually still called the Momentus XT, uh, and the name itself actually tells you a lot about the drive in that this is seriously just an evolution of the original uh, and not the kind of revolutionary jump that we were hoping for. The differences, uh, for starters, it's got a 750 gig capacity now up from 500 gigs. Uh, this is a 4K sector drive. Um, so all of the uh, potential alignment issues that, that go along with that, and, and I address all of that in the, the full review on anontech.com. So it's a 750 gig 4K drive. Uh, it's also got a doubling of the NAND. So four gigs of SLC on the, or in the original drive now is eight gigs of SLC on this drive. The drive is still using the NAND as a read cache alone, but thanks to a doubling in the capacity, it means that the caching algorithms can pull data in there quicker and it can pull more data in there. Uh, in general, what this translates to is better performance if you have a more varied workload. Um, and what it also allows Seagate to do is through a firmware update, uh, what Seagate's promising me uh, sometime early next year, the drive will be able to cache both reads and writes. It's uh, a, Seagate actually brought over a version of the drive with this firmware on it. Huge performance improvement, still not quite SSD speed, but definitely a big performance improvement from enabling that uh, feature on the drive. Um, and with eight gigs of SLC NAND this time around, that's basically enough space to cache more than what you did before in terms of read, as well as start to incorporate some write caching. Uh, Seagate still f prefers uh, caching reads because, again, client workloads are, are more read heavy than they are write heavy. Those are the major changes. Uh, I'd like to see 20, 30 gigs plus uh, of NAND on here. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, the economics of being a hard drive manufacturer trying to sell to OEMs uh, dictate that we're at 8 gigs, um, uh, at least with SLC today. In the future, I can see Seagate moving to a, uh, kind of a larger capacity MLC drive. But uh, for now, this is where we're at. So how does it perform? Uh, pretty much like a better version of the original. Uh, so in things like boot time, application launch time, even launching multiple applications at the same time, this drive is faster than any other hard drive uh, that you would kind of test in its class. So definitely faster than all the two and a half inch drives, faster than all the three and a half inch 7200 RPM drives. Uh, if you have to buy a hard drive, this is actually probably a really, really good bet. The problem is it's still a two and a half inch 7200 RPM drive. So the first time you go to do anything, whether it's a read or it's a write, it's going to be slow. It's going to perform like a normal two and a half inch drive. Uh, overall, I would kind of peg its performance somewhere between, uh, you know, if you include the times, uh, uh, the first iteration of doing anything with this drive, I would put its performance somewhere between uh, the fastest two and a half inch drive and uh, some of the faster 7200 RPM three and a half inch drives. Uh, if you look at reads alone, it's definitely in the realm, or at least in the in the category of SSD-like performance. Again, still not as good as an SSD, uh, but a good intermediate point. Who should buy this drive? Basically, if you can only have one drive in your system, and either SSDs are cost prohibitive, or the capacities aren't there, or both, uh, and, and you really need the best of both worlds, if you're in that kind of a situation, uh, the Momentus XT is a good solution. It's a bit pricier this time around. It's $250, uh, so up nearly $100 from what the original launched at, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. I was, I was hoping this would be closer to $199. Uh, but again, that's if you've got a laptop or if you've got a system that's only got a single drive bay and you need more local storage than an SSD can affordably offer today, this is the drive to get. If you have to get a hard drive, I'd get the Momentus XT. If you can have more than one drive in a system, you got two two and a half inch bays in a notebook or you're in a desktop, I still prefer the SSD plus uh, one or multiple hard drive array option. Uh, I think managing that on your own, if you can, throwing your applications, OS, frequently used games and, and data on your SSD, uh, leaving about 10 to 15% free space at, at, at a minimum, and throwing everything else on uh, a hard drive array that you, you manage yourself, I think that's still the best overall performing solution. Uh, but for everyone else, uh, you know, I, I if you've got to get a hard drive, I get the Momentus XT. Um, the new one is just 
like a better version of the original. Now, of course, the, the obvious caveat, the obvious disclaimer is you got to wait and see what compatibility works like or looks like once these things get deployed into the thousands of OEM systems that are out there. I didn't notice any weird issues during my testing, um, but me with only a handful of test beds over, or over a handful of weeks, uh, that doesn't really... Uh, uh, say much to overall reliability. Granted, this is Seagate. Uh, they've been doing this for a long time, and they've definitely learned a lot from the previous version. So I do have some confidence that, that this thing will be reliable. Um, but that's basically it. That's the Momentous XT. I'm hoping for a more aggressive rollout schedule for future drives. Seagate's already announced that the Barracuda XT is now going to be a solid-state hybrid drive as well. Uh, so that'll bring that technology over to 3.5-inch drives. Um, and I'd like to see a world where all hard drives um, do have some amount of NAND on them and, and do do some of this caching because it really does improve the baseline of performance for everyone. Uh, I do understand that SSDs are still cost prohibitive even as prices have come down. Um, so it, it, I definitely award Seagate for, for doing this and, and uh, at least going down this route. I just want to see more, better, faster, sooner. Anyways, if you want the full review, including all the performance numbers, how I tested some of my... Uh, uh, I guess, personal feelings on the, the performance of the drive during the test experience, check it out at anontech.com. Thank you for watching.